Hello, and welcome to UConn's Q Center video series on mathematics. My name is Eric, and today we're going to be talking about how to choose a convergence test for infinite series. Here you can see that there are 10 different series tests that you will have to use when you're working with infinite series. It's going to be very important to decide which test to use for specific examples. Here is the list of the definitions and the statements for each series test. We, here we have the geometric series test, p-series test, divergence test, we have the integral test, the ratio test, and the root test. There's also tests working with comparisons that can help you decide whether a series is going to converge or diverge. And we also have tests with functions that have positive and negative terms. Let's look at this example. We have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of e to the negative n. When I look at this, what I see is something that's geometric because we have something raised to the nth power. But right now we have e raised to the negative n. So we have to rewrite it so that we have something raised to the nth power. Well, we can use the law of exponents to rewrite this instead as 1 over e raised to the n. Now we can use the geometric series test to determine whether this converges or diverges. The geometric series test says that if the absolute value of our r term is less than 1, that means the series will converge. If the absolute value of our r term is greater than 1, that means the series diverges. And it's, the test is inconclusive if our r term is equal to 1. So in this case, we have r equals 1 over e, which is less than 1. Therefore, this is convergent by the geometric series test. In this next example, we have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 4 to the n divided by 3 raised to the 2n. Now, looking at this right off the bat, you see a 4 over 3. I see a geometric series, but the 4 over 3 makes me think it might diverge. However, we have a 3 raised to the 2n, which we can't work with right away. We have to rewrite it again by rewriting 3 raised to the 2n as 3 squared raised to the n. Once we do that, we can factor out the n from the numerator and the denominator and write it like so. The series is the same thing as writing the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 4 ninths raised to the n. Now we can apply the geometric series test where r equals 4 ninths. 4 ninths is less than 1, so this infinite series converges by the geometric series test. All right, let's take a look at this example. We have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n squared plus 1 divided by 2n squared plus n plus 1. The first test I like to use when I see something like this, and I'm not sure whether or not it will converge or diverge, is to use the divergence test. That divergence test says if the limit of the terms does not go to 0, then the series is going to diverge. In this case, we can take the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared plus 1 divided by 2n squared plus n plus 1. At that point, we can determine that the limit is equal to 1 half. Now this is not equal to 0, so the series will diverge. The next infinite series we want to look at is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of cosine pi n. Now something like this seems a little, a little weird, so we want to write out the first few terms. If you don't know what the series is going to look like, or the partial sums are going to look like, you might want to write out a few terms and see if you can notice any patterns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start plugging values for n and see what each term looks like. For n equals 0, we have cosine of 0, which is equal to 1. And then we have cosine of pi, which is equal to negative 1. And then we come back full circle when we hit n equals 2. When n equals 2, we have cosine of 2 pi, which is equal, again, to 1. And then we have cosine of 3 pi, which is equal to negative 1. So each term is going to be alternating between positive 1 and negative 1. Now something like this, we can't say that this is going to converge. It might look like it's going to approach 0, because we have the terms are canceling out. However, it's also alternating between 1 and negative 1. In order to prove whether or not this series converges or diverges, I would use the divergence test. The divergence test will allow us to show that this series, in fact, will diverge. Because if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of cosine pi n, we're going to be alternating between 1 and negative 1. This is not equal to 0, therefore, this series will diverge. 
Next example I want to look at is the infinite series from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 1. Now something like this, I don't see any tests immediately that will tell me right off the bat that this will converge or diverge. You can try the divergence test and you see that it does approach 0 and so it's not going to diverge based off that. What I noticed though is that this looks very much like 1 over n squared which we know will converge by the p-series test where p equals 2. So I'm going to use a comparison test to 1 over n squared. Now 1 over n squared is actually going to be larger than 1 over n squared plus 1 and that is because the denominator of 1 over n squared plus 1 is larger than the denominator of 1 over n squared. And if you have a larger denominator, the entire term is going to be smaller. So let's compare it to 1 over n squared. We know that that converges by the p-series test, so something that is smaller than it is also going to converge. Our next example is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n squared plus 2 divided by 2n cubed plus 1. Now, right off the bat, I can't see any test that will tell us immediately whether this converges or diverges. We can try the divergence test, but that goes to zero, so it doesn't say anything conclusively. Instead, I notice that we have n squared plus 2 divided by 2n cubed plus 1. As n gets really large, the plus 2 and the plus 1 term don't really play a role. So this is very similar to n squared divided by 2n cubed. Now, that makes me think we should use a comparison test. If we try to direct comparison, that turns out messy because it's not easy to say whether this series is going to be larger or smaller than some other series. So instead, let's use the limit comparison test. Let's try it out with 1 over n. If we take the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus 2 divided by 2n cubed plus 1 divided by 1 over n, we'll get 1 half. That means that both these series will diverge because the limit of their fraction is one half. So this series is going to diverge by the limit comparison test. Our next example is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 3 raised to n divided by n plus 1 factorial. Now for me, whenever I see a factorial, that always screams out the ratio test because the ratio test works very well with factorials. So let's see what happens when we try to use the ratio test. We take the absolute value as the limit goes to in n or goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. Now if we try that out, we'll get something that looks like this. There'll be the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 divided by n plus 2, which goes to 0. So this will converge by the ratio test because 0 is less than 1. This example is the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of 1 divided by n ln of n. This is a little bit tricky. All the other tests are going to come up with an inconclusive result. So it's going to turn out to be an integral test. The integral test is a little bit more difficult, so my friend Chris is going to do a video about how you would use the integral test to solve this infinite series. Our next example is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 raised to the n plus 1 divided by n. Now remember, the special test that you can use when you have a series that has alternating terms or if you have positive and negative terms. In this case, we're going to want to use the alternating series test, which is when you have a series of this form. In this case, our a sub n is going to be 1 over n. So what we have to do is we have to see if 1 over n has the three properties for the alternating series test. Is it positive? Is it decreasing? And does the limit go to 0? Now, our a sub n, which is 1 over n, has all three of these properties. Therefore, this series converges by the alternating series test. Our last example is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 raised to the n times n divided by n plus 1. Now, looking at this, you might want to try the alternating series test. However, our a sub n does not satisfy the three properties necessary to use the alternating series test. So instead, why don't we use the divergence test? If we try to use the divergence test, we need to see the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 1 to the n times n divided by n plus 1. Now, in that case, the limit does not equal zero, it actually alternates. So therefore, this series will diverge by the divergence test. 
I hope this video has helped you. And if you need any more help, you can look at our other videos or you can come to the Q Center for personal tutoring. Have a good day.